Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this rainy, it's a very rainy day. Cool and rainy. I'm not going to complain about it at all. I'm not going to because it's from the Lord. Amen. Today is Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. It is 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Pretty dark out already, but just the weather. Just There's a season for everything, and everything comes from the Lord. So we're just going to continue to praise him, lift up the name of Jesus, continue to give him glory and honor and praise for each and every one of you guys. Amen. And God, thank you for joining me today as we continue this daily devotional. And today's title, The Gift of Presence. Notice the spelling, presence, presence. And we're going to get there, I do believe. I don't think the author's going to leave us hanging. And I had fun looking at some of the, some of, there's some awesome backgrounds, guys. I love, I love reading these devotionals. I love the scripture, the most important part. That's number one. Giving God glory by reading his word, definitely. But then researching some backgrounds. And I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I do. It just kind of brings the story, the devotional to life and ties in with the scripture. But like today, the, the presence and with Christmas is right around the corner. People are hustling and bustling. We got Black Friday coming up this week. People are going to be out there at 2 o'clock in the morning. They can't get up and go to church or praise God that early, but they'll go there to get that $75 TV that's normally $3,000. Guys, you understand what I'm saying? It's not about presence, but it's about presence. Bear with me, folks. We're getting there. Amen. But gosh, thank you again. Uh, today's studies, we're still in the Gospel of John, but now we're in John chapter 11, verses 14 through 27. A lot of familiar verses and scriptures in there, guys. Please read it so all of this makes sense. I read it over and over, and there, I'm going to go back again. There's some stuff in there the Lord wants me to really chew on that uh, really jumped out to me that uh, I've heard in the past, but he just brought it alive again today in a different way. I haven't seen it, so we may get there, folks. I don't know. Let's just find out. Uh, so John 11, 14 through 27, our lead all verses, John 11, verse 19, and the word of God says this. Many Jews had come to Martha and Mary, haven't talked about them in a while, uh, to comfort them in the loss of their brother. That's speaking to me already, guys. That's speaking to me. Um, Randy Kilgore writes this today. A number of years ago, when I was a recently hired human resource manager for a company, I attended the visitation and funeral of a longtime employee I had never met. The worker, a bricklayer, was loved by his co-workers, yet very few came to see his widow. I listened to someone trying to console her by saying that many people stay away because they're afraid of saying or doing the wrong thing and making the family more miserable. Folks, you've been there. Man, we probably all have been in that situation, man. I don't want to, I don't, I want to go and pay my respects, but I don't know what I'm going to say. Guys, you've been there. I have. And we're going we're gonna to get there. Amen. Uh, in times of distress, however, people rarely remember what we say. And guys, I read that as I was do, researching on this one. And I can go back to 16, how long ago it was when my father passed. I can visualize many, 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 many faces, dozens and dozens and dozens, probably close to 100, if not more, faces and people that were there. I cannot tell you one single word that anybody said. It's so it's true. It's just the presence of the people. That's the support. The people, guys, you don't have to go to a funeral or a viewing and, and say something. Where's, what do you hear at every funeral? I'm here if you need me. I'm only a call away. If there's anything we can do. Guys, those are, those are such cliche things we say. And I know we mean it. We mean it with sincere heart. And uh, you heard my brother Mark just passed away a couple of weeks ago. I flat out told the family. Now, whether or not they remembered, I don't know. But it's what the Lord put on me. I just told them, I'm not going to tell you the same thing you've already heard a couple hundred times a day already. You've got my number. I cannot make you call me. And I, and I told him, I said, and you probably will not remember me offering this. I said, but I know where to find you. I guarantee you if I was to call Rachel or Noah and ask them if they remember what I said, they wouldn't have a clue, guys. So it's your presence. Just, just being there, just being there for people. Amen. Um, what they most remember is that we were there. Okay. Familiar faces often strength, offer strength beyond description. 
They provide comfort for the deep feelings of loneliness setting in from the loss. This gift of presence, E-N-C-E, -E, is one we're all capable of offering. It's free. It's free. We're going to spend billions of dollars as a nation on Christmas presents, E-N-T-S. Even non-believers can't wait to get out there and shop and celebrate Christmas. We're going to spend billions, but we don't want to offer our time, which is free. And guys, that's all of us. That's the body. That includes me. That includes you. One body, many parts, many functions. Pulling together and pulling his body of Christ together. So just being there is free. It's free. Um. Okay, where are we at? We just lost it. Oh, this gift is one we're all capable, even if we're tongue-tied or uncomfortable. You don't have to say anything. Martha and Mary were surrounded by friends and mourners who comforted them when their brother, brother Lazarus died. Then the one, capital O in E, the one, they most longed to see, Jesus, came and wept with them. That's verses 33 through 35. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about it right now. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus had compassion. Jesus did not weep because Lazarus was dead. How do I know that? Because if you read our studies, verse 14, it starts off, and Jesus said to them plainly, this is Jesus. He said, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. So in the beginning, verse 14, Jesus is like, he's dead, and I'm glad I wasn't there. And then we forward up to verse 33. Once he does arrive, why does he cry, guys? And this is me, and I truly believe this to be a fact. Jesus wept because he was surrounded by unbelief. Everything he'd already done, told, and shown all these people, they still did not believe. But this is why Lazarus had to die, so that his, what says right here, blah, 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 so that, they, so that you may believe. And think about that. Lazarus has already passed away. I'm assuming he was already in paradise with the Lord. He was already there. Why? Why would Jesus wake him up and bring him back? Because he had to show us these things, these things that we are now capable of doing. That's a lot to think about. It's a different subject, guys. Me and my brother, we talked about it. If somebody has already fallen asleep in the Lord and they're, they're in paradise, they're in heaven, why would we wake them up and bring them back to this sin-filled, crooked, perverse generation of the world? I don't know. I'm guessing Jesus had multiple, well, not multiple reasons. We know the reason he, uh, he raised Lazarus was to prove, to prove in this, to get people to believe, just to get people to simply believe. And we got, again, we can go on and on, but we're not going to. Let's just keep going on this, folks. Um, it says, Jesus wept with them, and the people responded, see how he loved him. Well, yes, Jesus loved everybody, people. He loved everybody. He loved everybody. He he. he I think his heart hurt for Mary and Martha that they felt the loss of a loved one, but I think it, I still think it hurt more. He wept because of the unbelief. I truly believe that guys In loss of any kind. Jesus always gives his comforting presence. How awesome is that without the presence of the Lord guys. And you know what that is complete absence of the Lord's presence. That's called hell. And that's where many people are heading and hell is total eternal separation from god god you cannot call out you can call out to him he ain't gonna hear he ain't gonna listen that's total separation that is death hell is death and that's total separation no longer god's presence the presence that we all need to be hungry for and we have the ability to keep to give deeply of his compassion simply by the gift of our presence amen thank you randy kilgore i don't know if i mentioned your name brother in our quote today Often the best comfort is just being there. Hey, man, guys, this is so beautiful. We've all been there. We've all lost somebody or know somebody has lost somebody. We, we've been uncomfortable. I mean, nobody nobody loves going to a funeral. It's like, oh, there's a funeral this weekend. I can't wait to go. I mean, you, you can get excited if a loved one is going home to be with the Lord. If their assignment's over, I understand that. But you got to understand the family's going to still mourn and weep and miss them. And the Bible does say, Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. The Bible says there's a time for everything. There's a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to all of this stuff. Just the main thing is just to surrender and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may tell you, don't go. Don't go. You don't need to be seen there or I need you to go. He may tell you to go to a funeral of somebody you don't even know because he just wants your presence to be made. I don't know, guys. 
we just need to listen to the following of that. But that was pretty much the only thing I had highlighted that stood out to me. Because uh, it said in verse 33, before Jesus wept, when he saw everybody in their disbelief, it said he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. So when he saw everybody moaning and crying, and all, that's when Jesus groaned. He, he, he hurt in the spirit because of the unbelief. So, guys, this is this is just beautiful. It's another another great reminder. Uh, definitely, you know, his everything's a great reminder. Of Jesus' love It's a great reminder of his presence in us and through us again for God's glory. It's just uh, and please just get alone. I'm gonna get off of here and read the scripture some more because this is speaking to me. It's almost like I can hear it in the background talking to me. I think it's something I may have overlooked. So maybe you guys, you get in there, read those verses, chapter 11, 14 through 27. Something may jump out at you. Something may be speaking to you right now. Maybe you know somebody that's so alone with the holidays coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all that. You don't have to go out and buy them a shopping cart full of toys and clothes. You don't have to buy them a big extravagant 24-course dinner. Maybe just go and visit them. Go and see them. Pick up the phone call. I don't know what God's what God's saying. I don't know what he's saying to me right now. I don't know what he's going to say to you. Just you got to tune out the world, tune into God. And just be obedient, guys. So thank you for joining me. Until tomorrow, Wednesday the 22nd, enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy his presence. Amen. Love you guys.